So if you've been following me on my main channel, Bright Sun Films, you might remember my video detailing the bankruptcy of Crystal Cruises. In that video, I talk about the sister company called Dream Cruises and their massive 9,000 passenger cruise ship, which was under construction. When the company declared bankruptcy, their assets went up for sale, including this nearly finished mega ship. A ton of speculation was circling around what would ultimately happen to it, and just recently, Disney Cruise Line announced they would be acquiring the vessel. Wait, what? Okay, so I don't really intend to do many news or commentary videos on this channel. In fact, I don't even really intend to do that many Disney-related videos on this channel. But here we are. Anyways, expect some more diversification in content topics soon. But this story is just too insane for me not to talk about. Now, I was pretty harsh on Dream Cruises and their mega ship project. In fact, in my Crystal Cruise video, I said this. But unlike Royal Caribbean's Wonder of the Seas with its 6,900 maximum passengers, Global Dream, which is smaller, would carry an egregious 9,500 passengers. Apart from it also being very ugly, the ship seemed to have pretty blatantly copied Royal Caribbean's design, but just made it worse. In the state that it was in, the Global Dream really brought nothing new to the table. It was copy and pasting aspects of design and features which other brands had done better. Its split superstructure and interior concourses are straight from the Oasis class. So are the dry slides in the back and the surf simulators. And the roller coaster is nearly an exact clone of Carnival's. Technically, these are new features for a cruise ship in the Asian market, which is obviously what it was intended for. But it doesn't help that it was all packaged in quite possibly the ugliest modern ship I have ever seen. Is it worse than the Pride of America? You know what, it might be. But okay, the company goes bankrupt and their assets were sold off. Basically, there were two ships left, after the other companies bought up the rest. They were the Global Dream, which was about 75% completed, and the Global Dream 2, which only consisted of a small section of hull. It was widely reported in September 2022 that the Global Dream 2 would ultimately be scrapped, but many news articles gave a pretty misleading title and showcased their reporting with pictures of the nearly completed ship. So a lot of people assumed that the almost finished ship was going to be scrapped. It wasn't, but it was put up for sale, and apparently most of the major American and European-based cruise lines decided to pass on it. So it really wasn't known how long it was going to take for the ship to actually get going. In fact, it wasn't even clear if the ship would ever set sail in the first place. Maybe those clickbait articles were going to be right and the ship was ultimately going to be scrapped. But then, in early October, a rumor popped up originating from a German radio station claiming that Disney Cruise Line was in negotiations to purchase the ship. It was then picked up by several industry news sites and that gave the rumor some legs. When I first saw it, I almost immediately dismissed it, thinking it was just too baffling to be true. But as the weeks passed, Disney never came out and denied the claim, which got me a little worried. Then, on November 16th, it was reported that Disney was about to announce their purchase agreement, and sure enough, four hours later, they announced it. It was actually Scott Gustin's Twitter post that I saw first, and genuinely thought the concept art was something that he had found on, like, DeviantArt or something. I thought it was fake. I was actually sitting in a Firehouse subs and broke out into laughter when I first saw it, with, I guess, a mixture of shock and pure confusion. So, what the hell? I've been following the story of the Global Dream for a little while now, obviously. The ship is so ugly and in such a weird place in the market that I didn't really know who was going to buy it. The ship is massive and formatted for a different market, so you'll need a company that's interested in the Asian markets and willing to operate one of the largest ships in the world. I figured it would ultimately be purchased by some Chinese investment group or something. I always had doubted that Royal Caribbean or Norwegian were going to be seriously interested in it. They've already invested their own tailor-made ships for the markets, so they would likely be out of the picture. So what is going on here? Well, the Global Dream was designed by an Asian architecture firm for the Asian markets. It was obviously built for that market, so the thinking was that any US or European cruise line that would be interested in making a somewhat easy entry into the Chinese cruise market would do so with this vessel. Now, most of the major US cruise lines had already made a presence in China. A Disney Cruise Line has never sent a vessel to the region, but the company does have a good understanding of the market with their parks and resorts. So Disney Cruise 
Line is taking the easy road to get there by purchasing this ship, adding their own touches to it, and sending it to Asia. While their press release only states that it would be based outside of the US market and doesn't necessarily mention China, there's a very high likelihood that it's going to be primarily based there. I saw a few people asking me why I thought this was baffling news, and it's basically all down to the 360 degree turn for the Disney Cruise Line brand. I've talked pretty extensively about the legacy of DCL and how it began with bespoke ship designs that were unlike anything else. I've seen Imagineers talk about how valuable the iconography of their ships are, and how they're willing to sacrifice a few hundred thousand square feet in order to make a more aesthetically pleasing vessel. Other ships do whatever they want and not really put all that much time and care into how it's all packaged, whereas Disney ships are tightly bound to that philosophy. I think that's extremely admirable, and while I do think even their newest ship, the Disney Wish, is a slight downgrade from the previous vessels in the fleet, it's still a somewhat coherent exterior design that fits in with the brand they have been building for the last 25 years. Remember, all of their ships thus far are designed to invoke the design of classic ocean liners, even the Wish. This new ship also carries that livery, but the press release comically says that the, quote, exterior will be adorned in the iconic Mickey Mouse inspired colors of the fleet. So I guess there's really no way to spin that the ship is a 1930s styles ocean liner. It just happens to have the same design cues as one. The Disney Magic and the Disney Dream class of ships will likely go down as one of the most beautiful modern day cruise ships ever built, inside and out. There's a reason why Disney has not strayed from that course since. But now, this is all over. With the addition of the Global Dream, Disney Cruise Line has completely screwed up their fleet image, and in my opinion, will forever damage their brand iconography. But then there's the issue of the ship itself. It's already 75% complete, meaning the vessel is already nearly finished. Unless Disney commits to a seriously extensive restructuring of the entire ship, the vessel is never going to be exactly how the designers want it to be. And that means they're going to have to work around what someone has already built. Now, if you've been watching my channel for a while, you'll know that designing around someone else's architecture can cause issues. The closest comparison I can think of is Norwegian Cruise Line's Pride of America, which is also a story I just talked about in a recent video. Just like this, Norwegian purchased a half-finished cruise liner from another shipyard and had it completed for themselves. The result was a ship that's also very ugly, and one that's just a little off. One that doesn't fit in with Norwegian's fleets, and one that I bet Norwegian would make fundamental changes to if they financially could. Disney is going to have to work around what they have now. And I think all the evidence you need that this is going to be a weird outlier for the brand is in the concept art. I mean, you could only put so much lipstick on a pig, and my god is this something. Hey, you like the classic ocean liner look of two funnels on the old ships? Okay, well how about six of them on this? But hey, that means there's a potential for six tower suites. Clearly their architects and designers are trying their best here. I mean, there really is only so much you can do to save the aesthetic nightmare that is this ship. What I will say though is that I am quite interested to see what Disney puts on this vessel. Global Dream is 208,000 tons, which makes it one of the largest ships in the world. The fourth, in fact, if you only look at ship classes. For comparison to their original fleets, the Disney Wish is 144,000 tons. So there's a lot Disney can do with all of this space, and I won't say that I'm not at all curious on what they do for this vessel. This is likely double the square footage they have on their existing fleets, and you can get very creative with it. Features like the water slides and even the roller coaster have already been built, so they're likely to stay and be featured on this ship. Disney hasn't yet named the vessel yet, but the company has said it will be expecting to set sail in 2025. That puts it a year after the Disney Treasure, which will be the sister to the Disney Wish. 2025 will be the same year the company takes delivery of their third ship in the Wish class, and this all brings their fleet size up to eight ships. This purchase was a complete surprise, and very clearly never a part of the master plan for Disney Cruise Line. And I think this is where the main issues I have lie. I think it's pretty clear that this was a quick decision to buy a ship with pennies on the dollar. Disney obviously got a very good price for the ship, likely close to half of what it cost to build. 
no other cruise line was seriously interested in the purchase, and Disney jumped on the opportunity seemingly not to care about how it would affect everything else. They'll still have to invest a few hundred million dollars to get it up to the Disney standards, but it'll be a bargain in the grand scheme of things. But that doesn't necessarily mean this is the right thing to do. Disney chose to buy an existing product to retrofit it into their brand, rather than taking their time and building out the very best product they can deliver to the market. This is essentially the same thing as Disney buying some random unfinished theme park in China and rebranding it as a Disney park. This move is obviously motivated by margins and capitalizing on a brand presence in new markets. And I'm certainly not the only one to think this, as other Imagineers have publicly disclosed how this is a bad idea. Only time will tell if the end product will actually be worthy of the legendary Disney Cruise Line name. But what do you think? I'm obviously very passionate about Disney Cruise Line, and I'm quite disappointed in the current direction of the brand. So maybe I'm a bit harsh because of it. I'm not even really all that against new stuff, but as a consumer, I expect their product to be as good or even better than what had come before it. Especially if they're going to charge me more for it. Anyways, thanks for indulging me in this news slash rant, and there's lots more to come on this channel in the future, including a cruise on Virgin Voyages, which was actually co-founded by the former president of Disney Cruise Line. So please do subscribe for when that comes out. My name is Jake, and thank you very much for watching.